Today, we're going to talk about this. It is a ceramic coffee filter. It's a brewer and a filter all in one. It's just one thing. You put coffee in, you pour water on top, you get a cup of coffee out the other side. How does it work? Is it is it a good thing? Is it the zero waste answer to coffee brewing? Is it just TikTok fodder? Let's find out. These ceramic brewers have been around for a little while now. I think this material, this kind of interesting ceramic material, was invented in 1986 by a company called Kuamon in Japan. They do things for plants and things for coffee, because both benefit, I guess, from a porous ceramic material. It's a weird one. If you look at it, you can put a bright light behind it, no light comes through. It's not like there are little direct channels through the bed and it's filtering that way. Instead, I guess, this is more like crushed together, smushed together pieces that form a kind of maze and the water has to run through and, and the sort of, you know, brewed coffee can get through, but the pieces of coffee can't. Thus you have filtration without the need for paper or metal or anything like that. Definitely interesting. They've had a bit of a resurgence lately. This one isn't made by QMON. This one's made by a chemical 224. There is, I think, one called Loka that's doing the rounds that I think has spurned the recent round of interest. I first bought one of these, I think maybe in 2009. I'd gone to Japan, I was in a department store in Tokyo called Tokyo Hands, and I bought everything that I could find that made coffee that I'd never seen before, and one of these was included. So I used it. I brewed with it. I formed an opinion. And I stopped brewing with it. And I want to talk about why, what's good about it, what's bad about it, and I guess to do that, we should make some coffee. As I said, this one comes from 224, which also comes with this. This is like a holder for it to sort of suspend it above your Brewer. I think it's a beautiful colour. I don't love the moment when you sort of ooh, crunch it into place. But but that's sort of how you would brew with it. Now, they do say that you should really give them a good rinse before you use them, especially the first time. This one's made a bit of coffee today, uh, but it should still, you know, benefit from a little rinse. We'll talk about cleaning at the end, because there's qu quite a lot to talk about when it comes to cleaning. Let me get some hot water. Now you can see the way that the kind of water comes right through the brewer. It's kind of interesting. That'll impact how we brew with it later. Now, as I said, I've made a few cups of coffee with this today. I have cleaned it thoroughly, but you can still see a little color in the water. It does seemingly cling on to things that you don't want it to after you've brewed with it, which is a, a little frustration. Now I've ground a little bit coarser for this. They do recommend grinding coarser and all the kind of um, supporting materials for all of the brewers, really. I guess they're trying to avoid clogging, but I still need to extract the coffee properly. Anyway, let's uh, let's brew as we would a V60. Now I'm brewing uh, 15 to 250, so a relatively small brew. I, I don't recommend brewing much larger brews with this particular brewer either. So kind of one cup at a time is kind of what I would say is the limit. Now I've gone backwards and forwards in terms of technique. I've gone for the kind of low bed and slow flow, but actually that, that doesn't work super well for me. So I've kind of gone back to as I brew a V60 where, you know, we're going to pour a little bit faster. We're going to fill the brewer up, have a, a bigger thermal mass, but also this seems to prevent clogging and stalling uh, that I've had issues with uh, brewing the kind of low and slow method. Regardless of that, you are going to have a slower brew than you would do with pretty much any other sort of filtration device. This definitely prolongs the contact time quite a bit when you brew. So we have coffee, and while it cools down, we do need to talk about some of the kind of eyebrow-raising claims on the websites of these drippers that you'll see. Uh, and that's mostly to do with far infrared radiation. You'll see the claims that because these things emit far infrared radiation, or FIR, that they improve the taste of the coffee that way. You'll see them sort of suggested to be adequate water filters to just pour water through these things. Now, there may be some active carbon present in them. I don't know. That would obviously clean up some negative tastes. Uh, as for the far infrared radiation, there seems to be a lot of good research around the benefits from a health perspective or a treatment perspective of FIR, but the whole makes your coffee taste better feels much closer to difficult to prove stuff. I'm not sure in all of the brews that I've had from these brewers that it tastes like something magical has happened from the brewer, improving the taste of the water, improving the taste of the coffee. All ceramics, to some extent, emit far infrared radiation and other kinds of radiation too, and the amount that they emit is tied to how hot they are. Uh, in this case, you know, 90 degrees Celsius is, is a, a little hot, but not incredibly hot, where you'd have a much higher level of emission. So I, I, I'm just very skeptical of that 
if you have good, well-researched information, please leave a comment down below, because I'd actually like to learn more about this and kind of whether there's anything to it or whether really there's some medical benefits to, to intense levels of FIR or, 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 or what's going on. I just want to know. I don't know. Educate me. On this channel, you'll see me say this a lot, which is if you take good coffee, grind it well, add good water, brew with a sensible technique, you're kind of most of the way there. And that's true of this. We did the good coffee and good water thing, and you can taste that in the brew, but these brewers consistently, for me, have a, a taste, a taste of the brewer that I can't get rid of or I can't quite get past. And it's really hard to describe what it is because it doesn't necessarily taste like what you might expect, which is kind of old, stale coffee trapped inside it. That isn't the taste. It isn't that kind of rancid, bitter, old coffee flavor thing. It's something else. It's almost kind of not quite cereally, not quite kind of papery. It's it's just something just unsettling and not quite right in the coffee. And I don't want it to be there, but it's it's definitely there. Other people may not be as sensitive to it as I am, but if I know what the coffee tastes like, then almost everything I'm trying to do when I brew coffee is maintain some level of transparency and just taste the coffee and not taste the mistakes or the issues of the water or the brewing or all of that kind of stuff. And I feel like there's just a little layer of flavor that I don't like added to the top of this brewer. So there's two things to talk about. Firstly, there's cleaning, which I really need to talk about and will make me a little bit irate and also frustrated with the paradoxical nature of this brewer. And also, who is this brewer for? Both of these things we'll have a look at after an ad for this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you need a website or a domain, then I would recommend checking out Squarespace. And chances are you've got an idea at the back of your brain, an idea for a website, you've got maybe a domain that you've always wanted to buy. Go and see Squarespace. They make it so easy because you start with one of their beautiful templates. This means you're not staring at a blank page. It means you've kind of got a container to fill with your words, your images, your ideas, and shaping it, changing fonts, changing layouts, it's really, really easy. And when it comes time to hit publish on that website, share it with the world, you do so feeling confident that it's gonna look great on every single browser, every single device. And what's more, there's nothing to patch or upgrade or install that is all taken care of. But as I always say, don't take my word for it. You can sign up for a free trial at the link in the description down below. And when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So let's talk about cleaning because honestly, it's not good. It's not good. At the end of the brew, you'll have your, your sort of hopefully reasonably dry bed. These things do, as I said, have a tendency to stall. And they say, don't use detergent. So you're going to rinse this under a, a tap. And they say, use lots and lots of hot water to get as much of the kind of coffee oil and stuff out. It's not like a sieve, right? Where you can sort of turn it over and sort of blow sort of stuff off the inside with hot water coming through. It doesn't work that way. So it's all gonna be just in with your hand. Do not use any sort of material here. No scrubbers, nothing like that. This collects any sort of material very easily. Don't dry it with a tea towel. Don't do any of that because fluff accrues. So you're, you're really using your hand as much as possible or maybe like a, a, a scrubbing brush or something like that. It's not particularly fun. And even if you do that, you tend to find that this will clog over time. Now they say two things. You can boil this in water is one option, or you can sort of invert it and leave it on top of a medium setting gas flame for about 15 minutes, which is a long time. And, and essentially that's probably gonna work quite well because after about 15 minutes, this will be hot enough that you will have turned to ash any organic material left inside this thing, right? Like the ceramic is going to be stable to incredibly high temperatures, but but coffee will burn and turn to just carbon and ash before that point. And that's what you're going to do, which I don't know if that seems good. You could probably get like your Bripes blue flame lighter and have a go at that. But, you know, you're probably not going to get the temperatures you need easily without burning through a, a kind of a full dose of fuel for that thing. So cleaning it, neither of those make me feel good. And then the fact that you need to use a lot of hot water for it, also not appealing. It needs a lot of rinsing before, after, all of that stuff. And if you think about what you're saving, which is a paper, like a filter paper, which is a, you know not even a gram of paper, versus all of the hot water and energy that you use to clean this thing, this is, because it is zero waste, less sustainable, right? Like the paper, in the great scheme of things, in the cradle to grave perspective, the, pa the paper's probably better and certainly quicker and easier. You just sort of pinch the paper out, throw it in the trash, into the food waste if you can do that. Quick rinse and your brew is ready to go. But this, this is just a lot more work. So if you're trying to brew back to back, it's not easy. 
Am I saying that no one should buy one of these? No, I, I wouldn't go that far. There is something kind of magical about how this thing works. It's amazing. It's fun. It's it's an, kind of a novelty, maybe. I have enjoyed buying one and using one and showing it to people, and they've been kind of like impressed to some extent or confused or just, you know, amused, entertained by seeing it make coffee. But as a daily driver, I don't think I would recommend it. As, as an ideal brewer for getting the best out of the great coffee that you've bought, I'm not sure I could go that far. You know, and this really is one I want to hear from you, because I guess there's probably a few of these out there now. People have seen these, people have bought these. How's it been for you? Have you had issues with clogging? Have you had issues with a funny taste that you can't quite shake? Have you found it easy to clean and maintain? Are you really, really enjoying it? I want to hear from you down in the comments below. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.